To understand how electronic tubes work, let's take a good look at one of them, one that's representative of its species. This is a diode, a typical two-element electronic tube. Let's get inside it. In fundamental operation, it resembles an ordinary single-pole switch, a switch that can connect, for instance, this battery and its motor load. One power lead comes to the anode, the other lead goes to the cathode. When this switch is open, the contacts are insulated from each other by a vacuum or by some inert gas inserted into an evacuated tube under low pressure. To close this switch electronically, all we need do is heat the cathode and give the anode a positive potential. Then here's what happens. As electrons are emitted from the surface of the heated cathode, being negatively charged, they fly at tremendous speed to the anode. In this way, a current carrying path is formed, which closes our electronic switch and permits our motor to operate. You'll notice, by the way, that the direction of electron flow is contrary to the orthodox concept of current flow from plus to minus. Now, at this point, you may ask, if an electronic tube is basically just a form of switch, why is electronics hailed today as the technique of a new engineering era? To answer that question, let's review six of the basic things that we can do with this new kind of switch. In the first place, we can rectify current with it, converting AC to DC. We can do this merely by connecting an electronic tube in series with an AC circuit. As you study this circuit diagram, note that only each positive half wave of AC voltage will now produce a current. When the anode is negative, the electrons are repelled and no current flows. In other words, because only the cathode can emit electrons, we have here what amounts to a one-way street. We can visualize the result of the tube's rectifying action with the aid of these two oscilloscopes. The one on the left shows alternating current coming in. The one on the right shows pulsating direct current going out. The applications of this basic rectifying principle are many and important. Here's one of them, changing AC to DC on the nation's electrified transportation system. Here's a Univac, the giant electronic brain made only by Remington Rand, takes business statistics from magnetic tape, letters, numbers, and punctuation marks, processing them through its electronic circuits at phenomenal speeds. Univac can compute payrolls electronically, then produce printed checks in a flash, over 8,000 checks an hour with this high-speed printer. Univac leads the field of electronic computing. In the beginning, two cavemen discovered they could count with their fingers. This radical approach had great impact on data processing. Computing by hand, however, had certain limitations. And a new technique was developed, causing a virtual information explosion. This system eliminated dull, repetitive tasks, relieving workers for more creative endeavors. But the search continued for ever faster methods to get the right information in the right form for sound management decisions. The bookkeeping load was heavy. As the march of civilization continued, as man approached the age of space, mathematical calculations became more difficult. Management faced overwhelming problems. But the first adding machine was already on the drawing board. Soon it became a reality solving complex problems for science and industry. In 1617, a Scottish mathematician named John Napier, working with numbered logs, discovered rhythms which he called logarithms. In 1822, an English mathematician named Charles Babbage invented a difference engine, which could have made quite a difference if it had worked. 
But now, many inventors, in trying to eliminate dull, repetitive tasks, were making tasks even duller and more repetitive. What changed the course of calculating? Punched cards. Rapid data processing. But rapid was not fast enough. In 1946, two American scientists named John W. Mockley and J. Presper Eckert gave technical leadership to a group which created a truly different approach to data processing. It was called electronic data processing. Recently, electricity had started running around with vacuum tubes, and Eckert and Mockley were with it. This amazing machine had 18,000 vacuum tubes. It could do 100 years of mathematical work in two hours. The only trouble was, tubes burned out. This somewhat interfered with the 100 years' work being done in two hours. But this was the present state of the art. Eckert and Mockley's electronic brainchild was called ENIAC, or Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. It was something to see. Obsolete? A giant electronic brain has started cogitating at the University of Pennsylvania. It's made of vacuum tubes, like your radio, and it can add up a column of figures a yard long in a second. It's the world's first electronic computer. Right now, it's solving mathematical problems for the U.S. Army, but who knows, someday a machine like this may check up on your income tax. But the 1940s...